Welcome to Grace Today, a daily vlog designed to encourage you and equip you with the Word of God. Let's begin. All right, on today's episode, we are going to look at the book of Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah is often known as the weeping prophet. It's one of the most difficult books to read in the sense that it is a lot of messages of judgment, but I would encourage you that there are encouraging, hopeful messages in this book. And even though he's known as the weeping prophet, he is the prophet with the longest ministry and the prophet with the most words written in the Old Testament. So we dare not overlook him just because his subject matter is difficult. So what will we say is the purpose of the book of Jeremiah? Well, I want to encourage you. This is probably the longest purpose statement I'll give you, but I think it's important to understand that this book is all about covenants and it helps us understand if we understand how this book relates to the covenants of God. So the purpose of Jeremiah, Yahweh speaks through the prophet Jeremiah to uh, pronounce judgment upon Israel for its unfaithfulness to the Mosaic covenant and to promise his continued faithfulness through to the Noahic covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, and the Davidic covenant by the establishment of the new covenant. Now I know that's a mouthful, but let me repeat it for you. So in this book, in the book of Jeremiah, Yahweh speaks through the prophet Jeremiah to rebuke Israel's unfaithfulness to the Mosaic covenant and to promise his continued faithfulness to the Noahic, Abrahamic, and Davidic covenants through the establishment of the new covenant. Now, how will we break down this book in terms of an outline? Well, the first 25 chapters are all pronouncements of judgment on Judah and Jerusalem. Yes, there are some moments in there where he speaks of restoration and he speaks of hopefulness. There is some silver lining to the cloud, but the book is uh, a pronouncement of judgment. And the first 25 chapters in particular are pronouncements of judgment upon Israel and Judah. Then, Chapters 26 through 45 really have a sense of mostly prose instead of uh, poetry, mostly narratives that culminate with um, the fall of Jerusalem. And then in chapters 46 through 51, we get these oracles against the nations. And much like in Isaiah's uh, prophecy, it's, it's very comprehensive judgment upon the nations. And then chapter 52 is kind of a historical appendix. Now, this book is difficult to outline and difficult to follow because it doesn't always follow a historical chronological narrative. In fact, you you get a description of the fall of Jerusalem in uh, chapters 44, 45, and then you get more of that in chapter 52. So it's, it's somewhat difficult to follow for that reason, but I would break it down in those ways. You have these pronouncements of judgment chapters 1 through 25, chapters 26 through 45, you have these historical narratives that do describe the fall of Jerusalem, and then you have the oracles against the nations in chapters 46 through 51, and sort of a historical appendix in chapter 52. Now, what about redemption? What is the key redemptive text? Well, as I mentioned, most of the book is a book of pronouncements of judgment and weeping over the fall of the city. That's why uh, he is known as the weeping prophet. But there is one key redemptive text in this, and that is the pronouncement of the new covenant in chapter 31, verses 31 through 40. This is an amazing, important passage for us as God promises both a individual and national restoration and redemption. He he promises redemption of the in individuals through the law of God written on their hearts and kind of a national redemption through the reestablishment of the people of God. There is a, a kind of now aspect to that is we are now in the new covenants of sorts as individual uh, Jewish people and Gentile people are being saved, are experiencing that law of God written on their hearts, but there's still a not yet because there is a promise there of uh, a return of Israel to the land and of a national salvation. So that is still coming. And we know the ultimate fulfillment of this new covenant is in the messianic reign of Jesus Christ. But this passage, the, the new covenant in Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 40, is the key redemptive text of the book of Jeremiah. So while the book is mostly judgment and is mostly weeping with the weeping prophet, there is this beautiful picture of redemption promised in the new covenant. I hope this encourages you. I hope this helps you as you read through the book of Jeremiah to kind of get our head around it. I would just encourage you to press through even these uh, passages about judgment are for our good, are profitable for us because 
God's word tells us that all of scripture is profitable for us. So keep reading, keep enjoying learning and understanding the grand picture of history as we study scripture together. I love you, Grace Community. I'm praying for you. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in to the Grace Today vlog. For more information on Grace Community Baptist Church in Elgin, Texas, or how you can support this ministry, check out the links in the description below. See you tomorrow.